What if I were to tell you that if you wanted to go ahead and make millions of dollars, that it's not actually about luck, it's not about a business opportunity, but it is about habits. Literally every single day, daily habits that you have, that if you just do it over and over again, that you will go ahead and, for example, succeed and make money. Why is that? Because habits, they compound. Here's an example. Let me actually go ahead and pull up a calculator, okay? So let's just say your habit is one, right? That's it. Now, when you go ahead and compound, you can see that one that doubles, that turns into two. But if I go ahead and double it again, check this out. That turns into four, turns into eight, turns into eight, 16. All this, 32. If I just keep on pressing that, if I just keep on doubling it over several times, you can already see that it has hit a million very, very, very fast. Because the power of everything and habits is in the compounding. It's in like the penny that doubles every single day. And in 30 days, that turns into $5.36 million. And all it takes is actually to go ahead and succeed, to get into a really good shape, to go ahead and live the life that you want is literally in your habits. I, I think most people don't understand that the only difference from who you are right now and the successful person that you have in the future, 10 years in the future, when you're dating that girl that you wanna date, when you're making the money that you wanna make, is your daily habits. And I knew this very, very carefully, right? So what I wanna do is just share with you the seven habits that essentially made me seven figures by the time I was 24. Because here's the thing, okay? I wasn't meant to make a bunch of money. Like my mom and dad were, were Asian, right? And, and their entire life, they were immigrants from the Philippines, they came to America. And my entire life, I just thought that if I could make six figures, man, if I could just make six figures and I could go ahead and make this money and I could become a dentist, doctor, lawyer, nurse, then I never had to worry about money ever again. So all I did was every single day, I was hitting the books, man. I was hitting the books. I was studying to become a dentist. I was studying to become, you know, the, the pride and joy of my family, right? But that wasn't the thing that was actually gonna become successful. And in order for me to actually understand the, the habits that would make me successful, I had to visualize who I would be in the future and what was the difference of me now to the me in the future. Does that make sense? Because what you guys understand is your personality will dictate your personal reality. And the reason why you hate your life right now is because you have crappy habits. Now, I can tell you this, the reason why I was completely broke, I can tell you why I was broke. What was I doing? What were my habits? I was spending time with people that weren't making any money. I was drinking every single weekend. I was focusing on, on, on comparing myself to others and drinking and chasing women and doing all these dumb things. So obviously, when in my calendar was it that I was doing any sales or that I was doing any marketing or that I was building any business? In my calendar, I could tell you that I wanna make seven figures, but if you literally looked in my calendar phone, what was I doing with my time? I was sleeping in late, I was waking up late, I was drinking, I was hanging out with losers, I wasn't reading any books, I wasn't spending around time with any people that were making money. It was a wish, it was a wish that I would make any money. With what success happens, success isn't a wish, it's a, it's a person that, that you become by just repeating the same thing over and over again every single day, right? So what was the first habit that I started developing earlier on is, that is I did the opposite of what people around me did, okay? Always have this habit, it's a really good habit. When you see everyone else around you completely unhappy, why would you go ahead and do the same exact same thing? I looked around in college and I, the, the teachers and the professors that were telling me what to do, they were completely unhappy, they were completely unhappy. All my friends were like, you know, I gotta go ahead and do this, I have to go ahead and succeed and do that. They completely hated their life, right? And I would fast forward to where they would be five or 10 years in, in the future and, and many of them are completely unhappy. Many of them end up just with the girl that they met in high school and college, completely hating their relationships, right? Like, like why? Why would I go ahead and do what it is that they're doing if they're going down a path that I do not want? So I started doing very things that were complete opposite. All of my friends look, I'm gonna get a college university. So I was like, screw that. Many of my friends were like, I'm gonna go ahead and get an expensive apartment. So I moved home with my mom and dad, even though there were six figures in my bank account. Many of my friends were like, I'm gonna go ahead and drink and party and go to the club. So I was like, screw that. I'm gonna go ahead and sit and read books. Did it, was it hard? <laughs> yes, yes, it was hard. You know that for that year my dating life sucked? You know, there was times where I was like looking at my, my, my month and I was like, man, I haven't you know, slept with a girl in a long time, right? And, and I would look around at all my friends and they were going out and partying, getting drunk, and I was like, man, you know, I wanna go in and sleep around with like a bunch of girls, like what they were doing, and I wanted to go ahead and drink like what they were doing, but I, I didn't because, because I could do that whenever I wanted in the future, when I'm successful, when I actually deserve it. All of this was just, you know, prolonging the inevitable, which was a crappy life that was very unhealthy in my, in my late 20s. And I tell you this around, the people that looked like they had the most fun, that looked like they had the most fun in that period of time, they're like fat, 
and depressed and, and, and married to someone that they don't even like. And that person doesn't even respect them. So I can tell you this on the other end of things. It was worth it, but in that moment in time, was it worth it? <laughs> it didn't feel like it. I felt like a loser. I didn't know if it was gonna go ahead and do this, but I just know when you go ahead and see everyone else around you and they don't have the life that you want, sometimes it's the best to do just the complete opposite thing. I did the exact same thing when I lived in Bali. Right? I was looking around, I was looking around. Everyone around me, they were maybe stuck at 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand a month. And I looked deeply inside what they were doing. And I can tell you this, many of them were not happy. Many of them were not happy. Many of them were just very complacent. And they were telling me things like, oh, you know, do this or go do that or do this workshop or just go get like, you know, just get a coconut and just go to the beach and meditate. Just go to the coconut and just, just be grateful in life. Be, just be okay. But I can tell you this, many of them were stagnant. Many of them were growing. Many of them were getting in worse shape. And I started realizing, ah, oh, all these people giving me advice on my life. If I were to go ahead and listen to them, then I'm gonna go ahead and get the exact same life and it would be idiotic. It would be idiotic. Like if I truly wanted to go ahead and succeed and I wanted to have the amazing physique and some fat person's like, hey man, this is how you go ahead and do to lose weight. And I listen, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I should go ahead and do it. Why would I listen to him? He does not have the body that I want, so why would I go ahead and listen to him? Or if, if someone who's in a horrible relationship with their wife, right, and he has no idea how to actually like, like, like be respected, he has no idea how to go ahead and, and be a person that, that is worth respecting, giving me advice on how I should handle my relationship, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> let me go ahead and try that, no! Because if I listen to him, I'm gonna go ahead and get the exact same results that, is, that they have. Again, so many people listen to just everyone else around them when everyone else around them don't have the results that I want. I love my mom and dad, man. I really do love my mom and dad. But when mom and dad are giving me advice on how to make money and how to build a business, why would I listen to them? Much respect to them, but they don't have a business. Why would I listen to them? Mom and dad are like, stay in school, stay in school. Why? Why? When you're struggling and fighting about money constantly, constantly arguing about the lack of money, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to you. I love my mom and dad so much but they cannot give me advice on things that they have not done themselves. Does that make sense? You gotta go ahead and do the opposite of everyone else around you. If everyone else around you is unhappy, what if you just start doing the opposite? Right, everyone's like, I'm gonna go ahead and get an expensive apartment in the city. And I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and live in a $200 a month apartment in Thailand. And I'm gonna go ahead, everyone's like spending money, spending money, everyone around me was unhappy. So I was like, I'm gonna start saving money, saving money, saving money. Literally look at the people around you. If everyone else around you doesn't have the results that you want, start doing the complete opposite and start telling yourself that. Everyone else around me was like, make a video a month. I was like, screw that, I'm gonna make a video a day. Literally just take, like people are giving you op like, like very good advice. It's all the things not to do and just, if, if, just kind of like have a filter in your mind. Whenever someone tells you something and they don't have the results that you want, just do the opposite of what it is that they say because many times that's good advice if you kind of inverse it. Does it make sense? So the second thing that I ended up doing is I focus on speed at all times. Speed, 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 speed. Money loves speed. Money loves speed. The reason why is many people don't understand that. They're like, oh, I have an idea. And months pass, years pass. Where's that business? Where's that business you're talking about? Oh, well, you know, I'm still thinking about that. No, I can tell you this. The longer it takes for you to do something, the more just sucky your business will be. I can tell you this, because one of the first times that I wanted to start an e-commerce business, right, I was like, you know what, before I start an e-commerce business, I need to go ahead and read some books. So I bought all these books on Amazon. I was like, I need to read all these books about it on e-commerce. And then I was like, you know what, I need to go to all these seminars. So I started going to all these seminars about like e-commerce, and I was like learning. I was like, oh, huh, huh. And then before you know it, like months would go by, and I didn't have an e-commerce store, I didn't make a single sale, and I just started having all of this information and over analysis paralysis and I had no money coming in and I was still living at home with mom and dad, right? <laughs> so obviously, you don't wanna go ahead and do that. You don't wanna go ahead and do that. Every single time you have an idea, marry it with speed and don't be afraid to fail. It's kinda like talking to girls, right? Like I remember when, when I, I, I was attracted and wanted to go ahead and for example pursue you know girls like just at random malls and on the street I did not know how to go ahead and talk to them I was like oh my god I don't know how to cold approach I don't know how to do this cold approach thing I don't know how to go ahead and say hi right so I remember spending all this time watching videos watching videos watching videos I'd watch videos of all these guys talking to girls and just like seeing how like much these girls were so attracted to these guys and then I would go ahead and read more books about you know, attraction theory and how to go ahead and seduce women. And I would go ahead and watch all these seminars. 
<laughs> but I never said hi to a girl. Like that entire time I was doing all these things, but I never said hi to a girl. I was so afraid. And the reason why is because the longer it takes for you to say hi to the girl, the more excuses you have in your brain, right? When the best thing you could actually go ahead and do to say hi to a girl is your feet need to move faster than your brain. That's it. You see a pretty girl, run to her and say hi before your brain allows yourself to actually give yourself excuses, right? And it's the exact same thing with business. The longer it takes for you to say hi to a hot girl, you start giving yourself excuses so you don't say hi to that hot girl. It's the exact same thing with the business. The longer it takes for you to apply speed, to start and turn an idea into reality, the more excuses you will actually give yourself. So the fastest thing that you actually do to succeed is utilize speed at all. It's the exact same thing with women. Oh my God, I see a pretty girl. Literally go ahead and say hi before your brain can actually think. It's the exact same thing with business. I have a business idea. Cool, throw it up before you could actually give yourself a chance to, to, to talk yourself out. Because I can tell you this, if, if you literally put a beautiful woman in front of me and you held me and you're like, Mike, just look at this beautiful girl, but you're not allowed to talk to her for like five minutes, do you understand that even someone like me, I'll start being like, oh, what if she has a boyfriend? <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if she'll throw water in me? What if she slaps me? What if, what if I annoy her? What if she thinks I'm a weirdo? And then all those things are in the back of my mind. So if I would go ahead and say hi to her, it doesn't matter how much money I have, it doesn't matter how confident I am, I would still be nervous to say hi because I created this narrative in my mind that is not serving me. It's the exact same thing with business. The longer it takes for you to say hi to your business, the longer it will, the easier it will be for you to create excuses for yourself, right? The third thing that you wanna go ahead and do, a habit is you wanna focus on volume. You wanna focus on volume. The reason why is because you're gonna completely suck in the beginning. Again, a lot of this relates to like, for example, dating women. When you completely suck at women and, and how to go ahead and say hi, what if you just went out and said hi to like 30 girls every single day, right? 30 girls every single day, right? What happens when you go ahead and say hi to 30 girls every single day? You're gonna realize there's only so many ways that they could reject you. There's only so many ways that they could go ahead and say no. There's only so many ways that, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll think you're weird. And then you start realizing, huh, when I said hi to all of these girls, I noticed that when I say this, and my energy is like this, and my personality is like this, these girls ended up liking me. But when I did this and this and this, and I was needy, and I was in the scarcity mentality, these girls didn't want anything to do with me. And the reason why you want volume is you want data, you want feedback, you wanna go ahead and learn all the things that aren't working so you can start doing the things that are working. And the more volume you end up getting, the more easier it just becomes. Does that make sense? It's the exact same thing with business. Like, I can tell you this, like, I remember starting an eBay business, right? I was like, oh, you know, I don't know if it was gonna sell. So I just put one up, I just put one thing on eBay up, and I just waited for, for weeks to go out and get a sale. And after weeks, I heard this ching, 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 ching. It's like this thing that like happens when you go, have like an eBay app, and I was like, oh my God, I finally got a sale. I finally got a sale. But then I started wondering, well, this was one thing up. What if I just started uploading 30 to 50 new products on eBay? every single day. What if I just copied and pasted pictures from Walmart and Amazon and just threw it up on eBay? And then I started realizing the more volume you have on something, the more data you see what works and what doesn't work, and the more you can double down what actually works. It's the exact same thing with content, right? Again, people are like, oh, make a video every single week. I was like, screw that, I'm gonna make three videos a day and I started publishing it. And I can tell you this, for, for a year, I was publishing in volume, three videos a day. I was changing up the thumbnails, I was changing up the title, I was changing up the clothes that I was wearing, right? I was changing up my personality, I was change, changing up the style of the video, the style of editing. I, with sheer volume, just started putting as much out there, right? And again, people thought I was crazy. People were like, well, some views got a lot, some views got a little. Some were really, really good, some really, really sucked. But then you start seeing exactly what's working, what, what like your audience likes, and you start doubling down on what actually works. Does that make sense? In anything in life, you need volume. It's the exact same thing in sales. I remember I was like in this like network marketing company in college and all of my friends thought I was crazy stupid for doing this, so I lost all my friends. So I couldn't sell my friends on this opportunity. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and start getting people on Craigslist, which is like the worst thing that you can go ahead and do to recruit people to go ahead and make money because many of them are just broke. And I remember getting on the phone with one person and he completely rejected me on my opportunity for me to sell him something. And I can't tell you how hard that hurt, the freaking single rejection. I, I moped about it. It's kind of like if you say hi to one girl and she thinks you're stupid and now you feel destroyed. Like that's it, my, my prehistoric brain thinks now I'm gonna die because one girl thinks I'm stupid so she's probably gonna tell the other tribe 
and maybe this guy rejected me on this business so now I'm not gonna have any resources, I think I'm gonna die. And you think because you have a lack of volume that you suck, when actually volume is actually what makes you realize what will actually make you go ahead and succeed. It's like if you have a multiple choice qu test and you do it once, you see all the things that you mistaken, right? So if I were to give you that exact same test again, you already know where you mess up on so you start making less mistakes and less mistakes until you get the same test over and over again and you're able to go ahead and do it perfectly because you already know all the times that you failed in the past. It's the exact same thing in the sales calls, man. I was getting on the phones every single time. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Failure, 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 loser, 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 loser. People thought I was an idiot. Then I started realizing, oh, when my tonality sounds like this, then people aren't as, 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 for example, intimidated. And I started realizing that if I sound like this on the phone and I started talking to people, <laughs> they weren't actually as intimidated. And sounding like that actually increased the, the ability for, for me to build a report and actually get a sale. So I remember like literally in my college dormitory room, just my friends would walk in and they would hear my voice and be like, yeah, so Steve, I'm literally gonna go ahead and sign this up. And I just realized that if I sound like as idiotic like that, then I could actually go ahead and sell people because then they weren't as intimidated by some random person calling. Like if I was just like calling them with this voice right now, I'm like, yo, what's up? They would be like, whoa, who's talking to me? But if I was like talking like this, like many of them would actually stay on the phone, which was weird, right? But I only learned that because of the sheer volume of me talking to actually these people. The fourth thing that I started doing is I moved to environments that made it easier, right? So it was very hard for me to succeed and make money when I was stuck with all of my broke college students friends or when I was in this place where everyone else was focusing on drinking and I constantly wanted to FOMO out. So I was like, what if I just left? Like, all my friends are saying in America, what if I just left? I'm already making money online, right? I'm already doing things. What if, what if I were just to leave? Everyone's here on this side of the world. What if I were just take a one-way trip to Asia, to Thailand, and I just live there? I started like literally doing that. I created an environment where it was easy for me to work. Why? Because in Thailand, when I moved there, I had no friends. So all I could do was work. In Thailand, it was hard for me to spend money because my apartment was $200 a month. I didn't have anyone to flex on. I didn't have anyone to brag. The biggest brag was I I left America. That was like my biggest brag. I, I moved to the other side of the world and now I'm traveling. That was my biggest brag, not my expensive apartment. My apartment was $200 a month. It had a smelly couch and cockroaches would fly from the shower head and attack me while I was butt naked showering, right? But it was fine because that environment allowed me to just focus on one thing, work, 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 work. I didn't focus on dating. I didn't focus on going out. I just focused on working. And that was literally the birth of this YouTube channel. Literally like going around in YouTube looking like a homeless person, walking around bushes, making videos, right? It was literally because I used an environment that actually worked. What you need to understand in any aspect of life, it's not even just, for example, success in business, but success in women. Your environment makes a big thing. Like for example, if I wanted to have a really good dating life and I wanted to go ahead and find the future mother of my child, I'm not gonna find her in Dubai. I'm not gonna find her in Ibiza. I'm not gonna find her in Mykonos. You don't find wives there, okay? I'm gonna find them in like some little village Right? I'm gonna find them in either Eastern Europe, in Asia, in the small little towns in America. I'm not gonna go ahead and find them in Dubai. If I'm, if I'm like wondering, oh, I can't find a girl, I can't find a future wife, none of these girls, what if it's because you live in LA? What if it's because you live in Miami? What if it's because if you live in New York? Any big city will literally ruin your chance of finding a good girl because it just promotes degeneracy, right? And if you wanna go ahead and find some aspect of a good woman, you gotta go ahead and move to that environment. It's the exact same thing in business. You wanna focus on business. Remove yourself from all the degeneracy that is your friends that have no money. Like I would move to Asia, right? And then I wanted to go ahead and find some other place. So I, I wanted spirituality, so I moved to Bali, right? Then I wanted, you know, networking with other people. So I was like, okay, well, where do they go? They go to Mexico, they go to Europe, they go to Eastern Europe, they go to all these places. So I moved there. When you make money, do you understand that you can easily change your environment? Like you, you don't have to stay there. You can get up, you're not a freaking tree. Like you can literally go up and get up and leave. The fifth one, I had this habit of paying for mentors. So all aspects of life, fitness, I paid for a mentor. Wealth, I paid for a mentor. Love, I paid for a mentor. I can tell you this, the amount of money I spent on dating coaches in the past year was probably over maybe 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand. I don't know, I spent a lot of money. Why, because I generally wanna know exactly how to attract the future mother of my child. I don't wanna go out there and spend like all this money going out and dating all these girls at the clubs, 
but I don't want that. I generally want to, to build like a big family. I generally want to have like a good traditional relationship. And many of the, the coaches out there were just teaching me how to go ahead and sleep with as many women on, for example, Tinder. That was it. I didn't want that. I literally did not want that. So obviously I would just go ahead and pay for mentors. I pay for mentors constantly. If it's people that make more money than me, here's some money. Give me some of your time. If it was people that, for example, were better at fitness than me, great, here's some money. Teach me how to become a better fighter. Or if it was someone that, for example, had a better dating life than me, great, here's some money. Teach me exactly how you text the girls, how you go, to go ahead and set frames and say, set boundaries, how to not be a Mr. Nice Guy, and how to actually be brutally honest and radically honest. You're not tiptoeing around and just lying behind you know, the girl's back, which doesn't serve anyone good, right? How do you actually become a man that, that actually is respectable in all aspects of life? I spend money on mentors all the freaking time. You gotta go ahead and ask yourself, you're willing to spend 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand a year for some mentor in college to tell you how to make money when he's never made money or some mentor right, in college university right, that, that's literally getting paid 60 grand a year trying to teach you how to do business from a book that's outdated. It's stupid. You're spending money on college to get drunk with people that aren't going anywhere in aspect in life and some person's like, oh yeah, spend five grand, spend 10 grand, spend 15 grand and I'll literally tell you what I did to get this result and you're like, oh, I don't know, that sounds too good to be true. What? It's idiotic. Like, like you gotta ask yourself, what is actually important to you? And if you tell me health, how much money have you actually spent in bettering your health? If you're telling me wealth, how much money did you actively spend going to dinners, networking with people that have more money than you? If you tell me dating and finding the future wife of, of your child, how much time are you spending dating girls that you know have a bunch of red flags, right? Oh, because you know, it's like, the feeling feels so good when we're so intimate, right? And when we sleep with each other and it's so good. So, it's all, all of it's a waste of time. You're investing your time, money, and energy somewhere. And where it's actually investing is probably most of the time degeneracy, hedonism, uh, you not focusing on business, you going out seeking validation from men and women. You're not actually focusing on spending money and mentors. Oh, but when someone has what you want, they're like, oh, we have an offer. Go ahead and buy it. Oh, I don't know, that's too good to be true. You don't really care. You don't really care about succeeding. You care more about degenerate behavior and your approval from friends that you don't even really care about, that they don't even respect you just so that you fit in more than you care about growth and mastery. It's, it's sad, it's very sad and it's very disappointing and I can only tell you this because this was me. This was me. So I would spend, I would, I, would, I, would, I would literally spend money chasing women, chasing girls, chasing approval from, from, from guys that had no money. For what? For what? So I could be fat in a marriage that didn't fulfill me with a wife that didn't respect me because I was a man worthy of respect because I didn't actually focus on becoming a capable man, right? So it completely sucks, man. The sixth one is I automated my savings and investings. This was a very easy habit that I started implementing several years ago. And this is something that's very simple. When you see money in your bank account, you will wanna freaking spend it. <laughs> I would see like six figures in my bank account. You know, I was, I was thinking, I was like looking at it, I was like, I just wanna spend this. I just wanna, because I know I can. No, you can't. If you see money in your bank account and you're not used to it, you will spend it. You will spend it like a freaking idiot, right? So what I do every single two weeks is I automate it. Every single two weeks, X amount of dollars. Goes, it goes out to a brokerage account that I don't look at, that it's hard for me to pull out so that I could literally accidentally save. What you need to understand is Human error is very, very easy to attain when it comes to finances. Why? Because you see the money, you see something that you like, you wanna go in and spend it. You need to create constraints in your life as well as in your finances. If you say you're making 10 grand a month and every single month you had five grand go out into a separate account, right? Five grand going out into a separate account and maybe like two or three grand going up to a second account for taxes, right? So you have one going over here for your investments and savings in your future self, and then another one going out to another place for, for the taxes, obviously, because even though I'm not a financial advisor, freaking pay your taxes, right? And then guess what? You have two grand to live off of. If you only have two grand to live off of, and you don't see that money that you just spent on, for example, taxes and like, for example, investments, you're gonna find a way to go ahead and make more money. You're, you're not gonna get lazy because you're like, I can't live off of two grand, I need to go to make more. The problem with most people is when they start making 10 grand, the money that they made, they freaking blow right away. They freaking blow right away. You need to go ahead and automate it out of your life and save it for your future self. And I'm telling you this right now, that's probably one of the best things that I could ever do. Now, 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 again, I would go ahead and for example, look at my broker's account, I'm like, damn, <laughs> I saved that much? 
I literally save that much. You gotta go ahead and automate your freaking savings, man. And the seventh one is you control your daily schedule. So again, everything in life is literally just your daily schedule. Like you don't understand that. Like if I eat a cake today, I'm not gonna be fat. But if I eat a cake every single day, and I put it on my calendar, up oh, 2 p.m., I'm gonna go ahead in time to eat my afternoon freaking cake. I'm gonna be fat as hell 90 days from now. It's the exact same thing with as simple as, for example, creating content, right? I'm gonna make this one video. Great, will this one video change my life? No. What if I sound like an idiot? No. What if I run out of things to say? Maybe I will. What if, what if, what if I have just a booger in my nose, right? There was videos in the past where I would literally have a booger in my nose. I was like, I don't care, I'm publishing it, right? There were times where I didn't know what to freaking say. Didn't matter, publish it. But if I do that one time, that one video is not gonna change my life. But if I do it over and over and over and over again for months, for years, for decades, it's almost hard not to, for example, develop a way of speaking, right? It's almost hard not to build like a, like a big audience, right? Because you're essentially just sticking to the freaking process. It's the exact same thing with walking, right? So every single day I'm on my freaking phone, right? I'm on my freaking phone and I'll be laying on the couch realizing I wasted hours, freaking hours of my life. I realized that it wasn't actually serving me and I'll be in a bad posture and doing all those things. So I was like, you know what? What if I could literally go ahead and spend an hour on my phone just like that? But what if I coupled this with walking on a, on a freaking treadmill? Like, do you understand that when my mom wanted to lose weight, she loved watching Filipino soap operas. So what she did is she coupled walking on the treadmill to watching Filipino soap operas. She would only allow herself to watch Filipino soap operas if she was on the treadmill. I was like, you know, what if I just do the freaking same thing? I will only go on my phone and look at communication and take my phone off of airplane mode when I'm walking on a treadmill. And I can tell you this, just doing that alone for the past several months, I'm getting in better shape just from freaking walking all the time. Because every single time I'm on my phone, I know an hour could go and pass. So what if I just walk? What if I just freaking walk? Like, do you understand like how shredded like I became just as simple as what? What do you do? I walk when I'm on my phone, right? It's as simple as that. That daily habit, doing that over and over again, I, I'm getting more and more chiseled, more and more in better shape. It's, it's ridiculous as it sounds. Your daily habits make you. So it's very simple. What I did is I fast forward myself into the future, 10, 20, 30 years from now. More money, really good dating life. Right, very good dynamics with men that I respect and women that I wanna, for example, start a family with. What are my habits then that I see that allowed me to go ahead and live that life? Let me just adopt those habits now. Let me adopt those daily habits now so I can tell you what it is now. It's very simple, every single morning, I don't look at my phone. My phone has not been off of airplane mode at all today. Still on airplane mode, even now, with all like the freaking notes that I have on my phone, right? I'll wake up, I'll do like some little stretches, because I know that my future self will probably uh, have a higher prone to injury, so I don't want that. So I'm like, you know, I'm doing these like, little freaking Pilates exercises and the bridge, all that stuff like on this rug. And after that, I'll meditate for 20 minutes to get some calm centered in my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll down two bottles of water from glass, right? no plastic, because plastic will, will mess up like your testosterone levels. And then I'll just go ahead, I won't eat, I'll, I'll go ahead and get dressed because I'll have some meetings today so I'll get in like this nice freaking suit which, you know, you gotta get a tailored suit, man. Tailored suits feel freaking good, feel really, really good. You, you feel like the boss. Everyone's like, damn, that, that fits. All right, I'll put this on. And after that, I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and create some content. So I create some content, this is good. After this, I'll send it to my editors. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I'll do some work but then when, before I look at my phone, which would be around like 11 or 12-ish, I'm on the treadmill. I'm freaking on the treadmill. I'm walking and walking and walking. I'm listening to positive po audiobooks. I'm also looking at any of the messages that people send me. I'm communicating with people via email. If I'm scheduling some meetings, I'll do it while I'm freaking walking. And then finally, after that, I will eat. I will reward myself with food, with literally food. Do you understand that I don't eat food until I feel like I deserve it, until I felt like I hunted for it, until I felt like I, I went out there and got some resources from the wild to go ahead and bring back home to like my, my friends and family, my tribe. I'll then eat. After that, I'll go ahead and take like, for example, Russian lessons, because I'm learning Russian right now. I'll literally go ahead and start focusing on Russian because probably the future mother of my child will probably be Slavic speaking. And after that, I'll work again. I'll literally work again and repeat. I'll go ahead and, oh, I need to go ahead and go on my phone. Cool, jump, jump on the treadmill and then finish dinner. And then I'll go ahead and have dinner with either friends or someone that I'm dating. And that's it. If I just do that for the rest of my freaking life, 
It's almost hard not to make more money. It's almost hard not to become more healthy. It's almost hard not to develop better relationships with people. Again, your daily habits will literally go ahead and make you become the person that you want to go ahead and become. Does that make sense? But obviously, in order to control your life and to control your destiny, you need to go ahead and make money. You can't be dependent on a freaking job. You think you're gonna go ahead and make seven figures with a job, you're not, right? And if you wanna go ahead and need help with that, we literally have some of the best business models in the link in the description. If you wanna start an e-commerce business, we got something for you. If you wanna start a personal brand, book a call with me and my team. If you wanna go ahead and find out the best way to make passive income online with AI Robot, check out the first link in the link below.